The Lord does not give us based on our performance. He gives us because He loves us. But there's a new doctrine in town. Breaking the altars. And we are breaking altars every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. Who raised up these altars? We're in the new dispensation, friends. Jesus is a perfect sacrifice. And he became the curse for us. The curse is broken in Christ. It no longer exists for those who are in Christ. We live in freedom. We can no longer live in fear of what our ancestors did. We keep returning Jesus to the cross when we keep making sacrifices after he has already been sacrificed. Jesus is already sacrificed. He is a perfect sacrifice. Jesus is not Omo, where the next version has to come with Omo with power form. Jesus is enough for those who are born again. Now, if you are not born again, then you have reason to live in fear. But for us, we have Christ. We live in absolute freedom because the battle belongs to the Lord. But these mother bahus that are being broken every day, where you have to pay a fee for them to be broken. You have to pay a fee for these altars to be brought down. Seriously? Seriously? So I want you to tell me, how many altars did Jairus break so that the daughter shall be raised back to life? And let me tell you something, some, one of the reasons why we keep breaking these things and we fall victim to some of these thugs is because number one, truly speaking, is out of greed. Because you want to drive a car like the one you've seen so and so with. And so you go there and offer a sacrifice that costs you everything. Some of you give more than you can even afford. So you give so that you can drive that car. You don't know where that person has come from. You don't know whether they practice witchcraft, whether they are corrupt, or what God has taken them through for them to get there. Or the values they uphold. Maybe they have been saving and you live beyond your means. But for whatever the reason, that's their path, not yours. You walk your path and trust God for you in Jesus' name. But don't be driven by greed and desire for the, what others have. You walk your path. The rich and the poor have this in common. God made them both. Jesus is enough. Wonder the devil has this idea that he has choreographed over a period of time. And now he is raising altars all over the place. And people are being lied to and being told, break these altars. And the only way to seek freedom is to give sacrificially. And then they use 2 Samuel 24, 24. That David gave that which cost him something. Now, that is first of all quoted out of context. Because David was not, he didn't want from God. He was offering a sacrifice of worship. Out of context. He wasn't giving because he was in need. He wasn't giving so that God will give him victory with, over another nation. No. He was offering that because he cannot worship God with that which costs him nothing. That's why he brought, he bought the threshing floor and the wood and the animals and he offered the offering, I mean the sacrifice. It is out of worship, not petition. Hallelujah. And many have fallen into this thuggery, this idea. Friends, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Jesus, when you accept Christ, he gives you freedom. When you're born again, you have freedom. You live in freedom. Knowing that it doesn't matter what comes your way. That the battle is his. That even when he looks like he's been dust, done and dusted, even when he's four days late, he's still on time. Trust in him. And let me tell you something. Even if he doesn't show up, if you're born again, you're going to heaven. You will either, 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 either way, you'll still be walking the streets of gold. 
And no one is coming back anyway. So you either go to heaven or to hell. Three. None of them give anything here. None of them gave a sacrificial offering. When Jairus went, he didn't take an offering to Jesus. The widow of Nain, he didn't offer any sacrifices there either. Lazarus, four days. Jesus didn't demand a bull, did he? So friends, let's leave the issues of money out of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is about the state of your heart. If you're going to give, then give out of love and obedience to his scripture. Who give, who give, ni wewe na ye, mutangangana na ye, buwana sifesana. And even for us who are the men of the cloth, let our faith not be in the people and in that offering bag. Let our faith be in Christ, in the hills that surround Jerusalem, because that is where our sustenance comes from. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah! It is the Lord who provides for us. Don't look at the people. And I'm not looking at you. Whether you give or you don't, friends, my hope is in Christ. Hallelujah! And when you give, it is between you and God, not you and the pastor. So let us worship the Lord. Let us win souls. Let us seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that we can be equipped when we go into the world and win souls and build the marketplace and build the church of Jesus Christ and do exploits for him out of love, not fear. Conviction, not condemnation. Buanas Fuesana. Jesus is coming. I pray that he will find a church without spot or wrinkle. Not a church that is cowed down and oppressed, offering sacrifices here, there, and all over the place, breaking altars that don't exist. Take responsibility of your actions. If you are living in sin and God is punishing you, it doesn't matter how many altars you break, God will still deal with you.